Hi beautiful friends, welcome to my channel. Jurong Bird Park, which opened on the 3rd of January 1971. To mark its 50th anniversary on 3rd of January 2021, Jurong Bird Park is celebrating its golden jubilee with two Singapore dollars and 50 cents admission fee and new special shows. Throughout the whole month of January 2021, Jurong Bird Park will adopt its original 1971 admission price for all local residents. Wildlife Reserve Singapore said on Monday, the 28th of December, that pre-booking is mandatory to facilitate proactive crowd management and safe distancing amidst the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Jurong Bird Park is Asia's largest bird park, offering a 20.2-hectare hillside haven for close to 3,500 birds across 400 species, of which 20% are threatened. Built at a cost of 3.5 million Singapore dollars, the 20.2-hectare park draws about 800,000 visitors annually. The park offers visitors an immersive experience with large open concept displays that feature exhibits simulating the natural habitats of birds. The bird park is famed for its large and immersive walk-in aviaries such as Lori Loft and the recently revamped Waterfall Aviary. Other unique exhibits include Penguin Coast and Pelican Cove. The bird park has been accorded a number of local and international awards for tourism as well as its breeding and conservation efforts over the years. Jurong Bird Park won many awards. Highly commended, Tourism for Tomorrow International Awards in 1993. Breeders Award from American Pheasant and Waterfowl Society in 2001. First Breeders Award by the American Pheasant and Waterfowl Society in 2001. Tourism Host of the Year from Singapore Tourism Board in 2003. Michelin two-star rating, in 2008. Superstar winner of the Excellent Service Awards from Singapore Tourism Board in 2004. Best Loved Pro Family Business in 2006. Excellence Award, Association of Southeast Asian Nations Tourism Association, in 2004 and 2007. In 2006 and 2007, Conservation and Research Award, International Symposium on Breeding Birds in Captivity. One of its highlights is the Waterfall Aviary, which houses a 30-meter high man-made waterfall, and was touted as the world's largest walk-in aviary, with over 600 free-flying birds. Committed towards conservation, the Bird Park is the first in the world to breed the Malayan Black Hornbill and the Twelve-Wired Bird of Paradise in captivity for which it received the Breeders' Award from the American Pheasant and Waterfowl Society. Jurong Bird Park is part of Wildlife Reserve Singapore and is the only park in the Asia-Pacific to have an avian hospital. Jurong Bird Park owes its founding to the vision of then Minister for Finance, Lo Keng Sui. The idea for a bird park arose from his visit to the Rio Aviary in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, while attending a World Bank meeting in September 1967. A visit to the Bangkok Aviary the following year convinced him that such a venture was feasible and could be self-supporting. Lo went on to propose the creation of a bird park for Singapore at the inaugural meeting of the Jurong Town Corporation in June 1968. He saw the value of a having a bird park as a recreational attraction for Singaporeans to enjoy and connect with nature at a time at a time, the country was in the midst of rapid industrialization and urbanization. By the end of 1968, a 20.2 hectare site was chosen on the western slope of Jurong Hill in Jurong for the location of the new bird park. The park was designed by the London Zoological Society's curator of birds, John Yearland and aviary architect, J. Tuvi. Construction began in February 1969, and was completed by late 1970. The park included 78 display aviaries, an administration block, a transit and quarantine station, a nursery breeding area, as well as facilities such as a tram system, a restaurant, refreshment kiosks, footpaths, benches and shelters. The park received contributions of birds from all over the world. Its opening day, 12 countries, 7 zoos and 40 private donors had contributed birds to its collection. The park attracted 37,493 visitors in its first 15 days and welcomed its millionth visitor in August 1972. Since its inception, 
the park has strived to continually improve existing infrastructure, as well as introduce new attractions to provide visitors with a fresh experience. Among the many visitors that the park has hosted over the years included several foreign dignitaries, such as Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, in 1972, the opening of Asia's first nocturnal bird exhibit, World of Darkness, on the 3rd of April 1982 marked the first in a string of new exhibits added to the park in its second decade. In 1985, Durham Bird Park finalized a master plan for upgrading and redevelopment in an effort to boost its image and reputation as one of the top bird parks in the world. The 7 million Singapore dollars redevelopment program commenced in 1986 and was completed in two phases over seven years. The first phase included a new entrance plaza, covered walkway, automated ticketing machines, a 240-seater air-conditioned theatre, the Songbird Terrace, new Scarlet Ibis, Manchurian Crane and Crowned Pigeon exhibits, and the Fuji Hawk Centre with the Hawk Walk and Falconry Arena. A breeding and research centre was established in 1988 to strengthen the park's ongoing efforts in the breeding and management of birds in captivity, especially rare and endangered species. The park has since successfully bred over 200 species, and its notable hatchlings include the barley miner, blue-throated macaw, black palm cockatoo, hyacinth macaw, king penguin, 12 wired bird of paradise and the oriental pied hornbill. The park also became Asia's first Heliconia repository in 1989, when it was designated an official Heliconia Collection Center by the Heliconia Society International. More exhibits were opened by the end of 1990, namely the Crane Paddock and Crane Breeding Aviaries, the White Winged Wood Duck Exhibit, the Flightless Birds Exhibit, the Woodpeckers Exhibit, Penguin Parade, the Hornbill and Toucan Exhibit, and the Cockatoo and Macaw Courtyards. The second phase saw the completion of a 2,000-seater covered amphitheater, a monorail system, and the Southeast Asian Birds Aviary in 1992 as well as the reopening of an enhanced waterfall aviary in 1993. This was followed by the opening of large-scale exhibits, Parrot Paradise in 1996 and Jungle Jewels Flight Aviary in 1999, where visitors could get close to birds like the yellow-hooded blackbirds and sun conures. In 2006, the park celebrated its 35th anniversary after a 10 million Singapore dollars revamp that unveiled a new Palm Plaza entrance, the African Wetlands exhibit, retail and food and beverage outlets, such as the Bongo Burgers Restaurant and Ben and & Jerry's Ice Cream Parlor, and Asia Pacific's first avian hospital. Apart from the iconic waterfall aviary, which houses some 600 free-flying birds from 50 species, key attractions of the park presently include the Wings of Asia aviary, home to the region's most exotic and endangered birds, Penguin Coast, which houses 100 penguins across five species, Pelican Cove featuring the world's most complete collection of pelicans, and the Lorry Loft, which is the world's largest walk-in flight aviary for lorries and lorikeets, with over 1,000 free-flying lorries in a space covering 3,000 square meters. The Breeding and Research Center has been open for walk-in public viewing since 2012 to allow visitors a behind-the-scenes look at the park's conservation and breeding efforts. In September 2014, Prime Minister Lee Shin Long announced the relocation of the bird park to Mandai, where the Singapore Zoo, Night Safari and River Safari are currently sited. This is part of a plan to transform Mandai into a precinct of nature-themed attractions for education and recreation by 2023. Thanks for watching. Watch a little the end. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Lynn and welcome to Kentucky Canada for High Flyers with you. Now this morning, we are going to take all of you on a flight and journey through the wonderful and colorful world of birds. So we hope you enjoy the show, feeling amazed by our bird conservation champions, and be inspired to take actions for all our better friends across the world. So, speaking of better friends, I'm sure you saw some of them running across the stage, right? Well, those were our Bantam chickens. Now, with that, everyone, we have one more chicken joining us.
So keep your eyes at that hut. Let's welcome Charlie, our bantam rooster. Charlie! Do you see him? He is just over oh, here. cannot fly but Charlie he has proven otherwise okay so right now we are going to highlight the natural behaviors of macaws then the wild macaws love to congregate on palm trees to feast on fruits and nuts so if you look right up there we have some fruits and nuts attached to the tree with that everyone keep your eyes back there let's all welcome the birds there you go now this is Gaia the high sea macaw one more friend will be joining here from way up there once again, Adrian, our Scarlet Macaw. Now macaws like that can be found in jungles of South America. So going back to Gaia, Gaia here is one of the four blue macaw species you can find in the world. Right here in the bird park, we have three of them. So do catch them at the parrot paradise. Now right now to feasting. What these birds will do is they will go to rocky areas just like this to lift up on clay or chalk and this will help them with their gestures of any unripe palm nuts or fruits that they have eaten. Okay, so it looks like Gaia is still right up here. Okay, not to worry, this will definitely be his next stop. Ihanaza, who do we have here? Oh, uh, okay, this is the one is if he is found the fall. I mean, he's doing the fall, go green for wildlife ambassador. But that's because if he is so environmentally conscious, then he will only use reusable cups, containers, and utensils. Okay. You look confused. Okay. Okay. Let me give you an example. Man, let's say you are a green seller. Oh, nice hat. Now, if you give Ify a plastic cup to drink from, he will not use that cup. A plastic cup? Yes. It's like this? Ah, okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is a single use. Disposable plastic cup. Okay, watch. If he, Lynn has given you this cup to drink from. <laughs> Look at that, he's returning me the cup. That's because if he will not use single use plastic. So let's say you give him a reusable cup this time, but it has a plastic straw. He will not use that straw. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Okay, I think I have something like that. I have something like that. Look at this. You don't believe me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, look, if he comes with a plastic straw, what now? Oh. Wow, look at that! He's returning me the straw as well! So, how is he gonna bring me down the straw? Everyone, look, look, look! What's this? has invaded our waters to such an extent that by the year 2015 there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans. In fact, plastic is known to kill more than a million animals and fish every single year. That is why plastic is the deadliest monster in our oceans. Oh, 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 that is a really alarming rate. Now we can all fight these deadliest monsters by reducing the use of single-use plastics. Just like if we can refuse the use of straws and bring our own reusable cups and containers when we buy, take away food or drinks. Now when we go shopping, okay, instead of bringing, instead of using a plastic bag, let's all bring our own reusable bag instead. Okay? Ah, good idea. Then. Look, look, I also brought my own bag. Come, you can use it. No. Oh, this is a single-use plastic bag. Remember the reusable bag I was talking about? I have something like this. Okay, okay. You okay. Use okay. your reusable yes. bag. Let me put in the hat, and there you go. Can we give our time if you big hat? to touch the birds. Okay, this is for your safety and the safety of our birds as well. And for those of you taking pictures or videos, kindly turn off your flashes because these bright lights, they may startle the birds or even harm their eyesight, alright? And then you're going to 
in the toucan family. So everyone, look at the size of their beaks. Now despite the size, their beaks are very lightweight and hollow, and they can even catch insects and mid flights without even stopping. Okay, so once again, I need everyone to remain seated. Please sit down, thank you very much. Now our toucans will be making their way to our second volunteer, there they go. So to demonstrate how agile they are, Mitra, she will be tossing two pieces of food way up high. Let us see if the two cats can catch them, okay? So let's just make way for Mitra. Now everyone, get your cameras and your video cameras ready. All right, Mitra, are you ready? Okay, let's just give her some time, okay? All right, there you go. One, two, and three. in the wild are declining due to poaching and deforestation, okay? So if you can, please support your local conservation efforts. Now I haven't introduced them yet. These two, they are Mr. and Mrs. Axel, a husband and wife team. So they have done a wonderful job this morning and it's time for them to get back home. Now they are very loyal to one another. So what I will do, is I'll place them on the stump right here. There you go, guys. Okay, Mrs. Axel, can you please lead the way? Home is that way. Mr. Axel, you follow. I'll talk about two cans, everyone. Now, what differentiate parrots from other animals is their ability to copy sounds. And they do this in the wild for social communication. Now the other day, Amazon parrot right here is famous for its ability to copy human sounds and we have one such bird today. So everyone, get your video cameras ready, okay? Alright. So let's start with something simple. How about a nice hello? Hello! There you go, very nice and sweet hello. Can you tell them your name? Amigo! One more time your name? Amigo! Amigo is his name. Okay, amigo, how would you like to greet all these nice people? How are you? How are you? So how are you feeling this morning? Good? Excellent. But not only that, amigo here is also very smart. He can count from 1 to 10 first in English. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's go back to Big John. He can copy a few sounds, okay? 
Okay, so let's try the hello one more time. You want to say hello? Say hello. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can try to say bye-bye. Okay, can we hear the cough one more time? How do you cough? Cough. How do you cough? <laughs> cough. Okay, we just want to do it one time. Okay, let's try another one. How about the chicken? Chicken. How do you do the chicken? No? Throughout the years, he has only managed to pick up five gimmicks. There's a hello, the laugh, the call, the chicken, and bye bye. Okay, so it looks like he's not gonna say anything. We're gonna leave him down here. I'm going to continue with our ego, okay? Alright, so our ego here loves to sing as well, and he can sing three different songs in three different languages. So the first song, a local children's song called Current Life, which means a guest comes to visit. Ego, can you sing in Mandarin? Asia. So when the female wants to nest, they will look for homes 
of Hagatine's entries. And then right up there is our last box, which is similar to what we give the Hondas right here in the bird park. Now I will be coming very close to you. Please do not reach out and try to touch the bird, okay? The bird. Can you hear that? Can you touch? Now that's how great pipe hondas will come out, okay? Okay, once again, please turn off your flashes from your cameras. And for those of you standing up, please remain seated, okay? Okay, okay so Vicky is going to inspect the nest box in a very short while. Vicky, are you ready? Come on. Where she goes. Vicky, your nest box is to your right. Can you hop along, please? There you go. Look at the very cute hop. So what Vicky is doing right now is she's inspecting the nest box. And only if she likes it, then she will hop right in. Very cool. Now once inside, the female will seal herself in using soil, regurgitated food, or even her own droppings. Now the hole, it will only be big enough for her beak to stick out. Okay, Vicky, you can seal the nest now. <laughs> there you go, Vicky, are you still inside? And there she is. Now everyone, keep your eyes back there. Let's welcome Sunny. Another great pine hornbill, Jurong bird parks, and an icon. Now the breeding behaviors of hornbills in the wild are very similar. The male will feed the female and the chicks inside the nest for about three to four months, after which mother and child will leave the nest. Now the Jurong bird park is successful in breeding the oriental pine hornbills using nest boxes, just like that one right there. And thanks to your contribution to our conservation fund, we have successfully released them back into the wild, as well as right here in the bird park. So do keep your eyes wide open for them while walking around the park. Oh, hi, Aza! Aza's here to call Sunny down, okay? Let's just give him some time. Looks like he's still enjoying himself right up there. Okay, Sunny, are you ready? Aza's waiting, look at that! Wow! Okay, just a little bit higher. 
There you go. Volunteers ready? It's kind of ready. A little bit higher. It's, it's okay? Okay. Are we good to go? Alright, ready?
fighting both these girls have done a fantastic job. Thank you very much, Poppy and Barry. you like that? Yes, okay. Now, before all that can take place, we will need your help. When the birds are flying really low above you, please do not try to reach out and touch them. This is for your safety and for the bird's safety as well. And also refrain from walking around or standing up during the show. You might distract the other audience. And if you happen to be consuming any food, please keep them away because some of our birds are very curious. They might just decide to come down and share your old snacks with you, right? We don't want that happening. Now all you need to do is just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So ladies and gentlemen, can we all agree on this? Yes, yeah, shall we start? Not convincing enough. Let's try this one more time. Are you ready for the show? Very good. And with that, everyone, let us begin. Ladies 
and gentlemen, the impressive eagle of my arm is the American Bald Eagle. Her name is Susie, by the way. Her bald eagles can be found in North America. And some of you might be wondering, why are they called the bald eagles when they actually do have feathers on their head? Well, basically, the word bald is an older English word for white head. So that's how they got the name. Bald eagles build really huge nests. And if you're wondering how big the nest can get, take a look at the pond behind me. That would give you a rough idea. And the world record for the heaviest bald eagle nest weighs an impressive two tons. Pretty awesome, right? The main source of diet for these birds consists of fish, but they're also known to go for smaller birds and mammals as well. By the way, lovely Susie here is 18 years old this year. There you go. Time for her to head back home. Let's give a big round of applause, everyone. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next bird of prey has got a very keen sense of smell. It is able to pick up the stench of a rotten carcass a mile away. Now, I mentioned the word carcass, right? What type of a bird of prey would you associate with the carcass? Not too sure? Let's see louder, please. Vulture, very good. So, everyone, let's welcome Titan. Oh, over yeah, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, Titan, our turkey vulture. And turkey vultures can be found in the Americas. They are pretty abundant in the wild, close to about 10 million of them. As I mentioned earlier on, they have a very keen sense of smell. So usually the turkeys are the first to reach a carcass. Now they may be the first, but at times they might not be able to consume the food as yet because unlike their larger counterparts, Turkey vultures do not have strong and powerful beaks to rip apart very tough meat. So they will have to rely on larger vultures to help them out. And here's a very interesting fact about the turkey vulture. They have got very acidic stomach acid, almost zero pH level. So you can imagine how powerful their digestive system is, okay? All right, thank you very much, Titan. Time for you to head back home as well. Hope you that away. Bye-bye, see you later. Off you go. Round of applause for Titan, everyone. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, earlier on you saw an eagle with phenomenal eyesight and a turkey vulture with keen sense of smell. Now the next bird of prey making its way out has got excellent sense of hearing. Let me give you a hint. It's a nocturnal bird of prey. Oh, that's right. Are you able to spot one around you? Look around. Where? Where is the owl? That's right, we have one waiting very patiently right out there. Uh, before the owl makes its way out, a gentle reminder to everyone, please remain seated and be as quiet as possible so you can get to experience the owl's silent flight. Here it comes. Whoa, very low above your heads. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, unlike other birds of prey, owls have this very soft edge at the tip of their feathers. So the sound frequency created by the wind flaps will be absorbed by those feathers. Well, that's not the only reason, there's another reason too. What do owls mainly hunt for at night? Anyone knows? Mice and rats, right? Rodents. Rodents come out at night and rodents have an acute sense of hearing as well. So the owl would have to be very quiet in order to catch its prey without being detected at all. That's why they're also known as the silent hunters of the night. Now everyone, this is Bulang. Bulangs are Malay fish owl and Malay fish owls can be found throughout Southeast Asia. This particular species has evolved to hunt for fish. So that makes them very unique, right? And by the way, Bulang over here was hatched and raised right here in the Jurong Bird Park at our breeding and research centre, which is located right back there. He's about 10 years old this year. There you go. Now I have a question for all of you ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure all of you know that owls are able to turn their head all the way to the back, right? Yeah, you've seen this before. Okay, how many degrees do you think they can do that for? 217. 316. 300. Anyone else different answer? 360, 180. Okay, I tell you what, I'll make this easier for everyone. How many of you think it's about uh, 180 degrees? Raise your hands. 180, okay. What about 270 degrees? 270, all right. Uh, 360 degrees, 360. 
Okay. Well, most of you got it right. The correct answer would be 270 degrees. There you go. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good try. Good try. But I must say, ladies and gentlemen, 360 not possible. That is a full circle. <laughs> the owl might sprain its neck, right? We don't want that happening. <laughs> Only up to 270 degrees. Is that right? There you go. She agrees. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Palam. Off you go. Okay, looks like it's starting to drizzle. I hope you don't mind if I move on fast with the show so all of you can get to see all the acts and leave the place right. Yes, okay. Now, for our next segment, I will need the help of a young volunteer, a boy or a girl. Okay, young man, why don't you make your way out? Let's give a big round of applause, everyone. <laughs> right this way. Oh, hang on. Let me, let me open the gate for you. Right this way. Come step right over here. Hi, young man. Why don't you tell everyone what's your name, where you're from? I'm from Singapore. My name is Abhijit. Abhijit? Abhijit. Abhijit from Singapore. Okay, now what's going to happen is the both of us are going to show all of you how agile and maneuverable brown kites are in the wild. These birds can practically snatch food from most surfaces. And to demonstrate that, I am going to skewer a piece of food to the stick right over here. All right, and we're going to get Abhijit to hold on to the stick with both hands. Both hands. There you go, and stretch it out as far as possible. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to watch the kite make an attempt to fly down and snatch the food away. Let's see if it's possible, right? Okay, are you okay? You look very nervous. Relax, relax. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is our volunteers ready. So let's welcome Rano. Come on, Rano. Here he comes. Whoa, look at the flight. Nice. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this one more time. One more time. Okay, Rano, once again. Over here, boy. Excellent. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give Abhiji a big round of applause. Thank you very much, young man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, that's not it. The brownie kites are also known to catch insects in midair. Let me do a little demonstration. Whoa, look at that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you like to see more of that? Yes, so without any further delay, let's welcome our team of brownie kites. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to toss food high up in the air three times. Let's see if our kites are able to catch them. I would like all of you to count together with me, okay? We're going to start off with number one very shortly. Oh, look at that. The kites are enjoying the wind. Whoa! That was number one. Very good. Number two coming up. Whoa! Look at that. Number two. All right. Number three. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to get this boy. Oh, okay, how about you? Whoa! Look at that! Well done! A big round of applause for our Brahmini Kites, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I hope everyone is having fun. Time to have more fun. How about another volunteer to help me out? <laughs> Hang on. This time, an adult volunteer. Okay. Ma'am, why don't you make your way out? Uh, one of you. Okay. That's right. Let's give a big round of applause, everyone. Right this way, man. Hi, ma'am. Come stand right over here. Hi. Tell everyone, what's your name? Nan. Nan, Nan. Where are you from? Singapore. From Singapore. Okay, Nan, Nan. What's going to happen is, uh, before, have you ever handled any birds of prey before? No. No. Today is your lucky day. Yeah. Very shortly, we're going to get one to fly down and land on your arm. Yeah. But before all that takes place, what I'll need you to do is put this glove on, on your left arm, make sure it fits very well. Okay, uh, once you're comfortable, face the audience and stretch your arm out to the side like that. Okay, Nana, nah, this is the most important part. When the bird lands on your arm, you have to keep very still because it's a pretty huge bird of prey. It's about this size. So when she lands on your arm, right, she lands with a big impact like that. Will you be able to keep still? A little bit nervous. Don't be nervous. I'll be here to help you out. Okay, okay. Okay, so what's the most important thing? Do not do not move your arm because if you move your arm instead of landing here, she's gonna land on your head. 
And trust me, you don't want a bird to fail anything. Okay. <laughs> Alright, may I just take a, take a few more steps forward? Very good. That's it. There you go. Ready? Okay, looks like our volunteer is ready. So ladies and gentlemen, let's... Ah, here she comes. Come over here, hands out. There you go, nice landing. And right now, we're going to watch lovely Hazel make a short flight to the exit right over there. Thank you very much, Hazel. Good girl. There you go. Okay, Nana, how was that? Oh, very heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> okay, since you said heavy, right? How many kilos do you think she weighs? Not for sure. Uh, five. Five kilos. She's only two. No worries, we're going to call her to hang on more time. Okay, right over here, Hazel. Come on. Good girl. Nice. Now slowly swing your arm around to the side and pose for a nice picture. Hey, okay, Nana, just hold up to this mic, please. Okay. All right, so Hazel over here is a vulture. To be exact, she's a hooded vulture. And hooded vultures can be found in Africa. They are one of the smallest species of vultures that you can find in Africa. And unfortunately, hooded vultures like her are critically endangered in the wild. Not many of them left, right? Okay, so Nana, who's taking photos of you? So you got some nice photos? Am I in the picture too? Very good. Right? A video. Okay, <laughs> All right, looks like uh, Hazel has done pretty well. Thank you very much, girl. Time for you to head back home. Very nice. A round of applause for Hazel, everyone. Thank you. So, Matt. How was that experience handling a voucher? Mm. <laughs> no, exciting. Very exciting, right? So you can tell all your friends you handle a hooded voucher, okay? Now ladies and gentlemen, let's give our brave and sporting volunteer a big round of applause. Thank you very much, thank you. Alright, this way man. Okay, thank you. Have a great day in the park, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, talking about vouchers. Over here in the Durham Bird Park, we do a lot of rescue and conservation work. Now the next vulture that you're about to see was actually rescued and nursed back to health by us. So, without any further delay, let's welcome Dentist, the Triple A Triple Vulture. Ladies and gentlemen, Himalayan griffin vultures, they can be found in the higher regions of the Himalayas and during winter, young vultures are known to fly down south. When they do so, some of them tend to go out of course and they end up lost in different parts of Asia. Just like Dentist, he was found to be very weak and dehydrated right here in Singapore in Orchard Grove. This was back in 2015. Well, the authorities contacted us, we managed to rescue him and nurse him back to good health. So don't you think he looks pretty healthy right now? Yes, okay. Thank you very much, boy. Time for the head back home. A round of applause for Genghis. Thank you. And with that, everyone, we shall continue. One vulture descends upon a carcass, more will follow. Group of vultures. Now I'm going to start introducing them very shortly. Start off with this big boy over here. Everyone, the Cedarius vulture from Europe and Asia. I'm going to get him on my arm one more time. There you go. Now, along with these Cedarius vultures, we also have the African white back vultures. They're right at the back, the smaller grey ones. Now, the Cedarius vultures are near threatened species, and the African white back vultures are critically endangered in the wild. Ladies and gentlemen, vultures are extremely important birds to our environment because they help to control the spread of contagious diseases by cleaning up animal carcasses. Unfortunately, the world's vulture population is rapidly declining in the wild. This is pretty evident in, uh, in Africa and Asia as well. Now, a lot of conservation effort is needed to ensure that the numbers thrive again. The good news is, recently we have partnered with BirdLife International 
to help conserve three critically endangered Asian vulture species in Cambodia. This would be the Asian red-headed vulture, the Asian white-back vulture, and also the Sandable vulture. Now, this uh, conservation effort would not have been possible without your support. So please give yourselves a big round of applause, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for supporting us. Please continue to do so. And it has been very fruitful recently because the Cambodian government has actually banned the use of a veterinary drug called Nigrofenet, which is uh, which is the main cause of vulture decline. So India was the first to ban it, followed by Africa, and then now Cambodia. So this is a big step toward, towards uh, vulture conservation, all right? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, after having seen all these birds flown here today, I'm sure all of you would agree that they certainly deserve and merit the title, the kings of the sky. Thank you very much, everyone. You are more than welcome to come forward, ask questions regarding the birds you saw on the show, and before you go, I'm going to tell you more about the other programs that are happening here in the Jurong Bird Park. 10.30, main entrance, penguin feeding. Once you're done watching that, head down to the Bulls Amphitheatre for the 11 o'clock High Flyer Show. Don't forget to catch both these programs. You've been a great audience, everyone. Have a great day in the park. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.